Hey folks, like a Sonic fan here. I'm uh, going to show you in a very low-fi video, because I'm using my very old phone here, how to fix the LCD display on your CC Plus Sanjian <clears throat> radio. Um, kind of a weird piece of technology I came across, but it's pretty cool. It's a very nice uh, FM, AM radio with TV band, as well as weather band, and you can hook up an external AM antenna. It's got fabulous signal, and it also supports a solar panel and uh, for charging uh, nickel metal hydride batteries. Anyway, the LCD panel is what very commonly fails. This is it right here. And how it's held on through uh, various models is there's a piece of metal that is secured over this rubber spacer, which holds down the ribbon cable connector that goes to the LCD display and the pressure alone makes contacts with these with this row of pins underneath here <clears throat> and gives you a display well problems occur because the kind of rubber contacts here for whatever reason just kind of uh, stop conducting electricity very effectively over the years and so people have resorted to methods of uh, using, there's a video of a, of a uh, blow dryer heating this up, heating this, heating this connector up to make better connection with the board. Now I stupidly, before watching that video, simply ripped this up to see what was going on. And to my sadness, I had found that uh, this, this black part, half of these are black, half of these are kind of copper, this black part is actually the ribbon connector ripping off of the uh, the electric conductive part of the ribbon connector ripping off of the rest of the ribbon connector, which is the non-conductive, uh, you know, plastic or whatever it's made of. So anyway, to fix this, what you do is you just take an X-Acto knife and you go in here and slowly... See if I can hold my phone here while doing this. Give you an example. But you slowly, very slowly scrape away. Apologize for this very poor video quality. Yeah, my, my phone won't even zoom. But you very slowly scrape away underneath the part where it's ripped off. And you go across the whole thing and make your make your uh conductive material exposed again. Now what I did is I actually cut off the top half of this rubber spacer so that I can then move this forward and reapply the mount. Now keep in mind before I did this I got absolutely nothing on the display and so now hopefully I can show you if I line this up properly. This is just for testing. I'm not actually finished with this yet um, but I should get with uh, varying pressure, a bit of a display here. Let's see. Put my phone down here for a second. So hopefully, you'll see here as I apply pressure differently with my hand, more of the display shows up, which means that it is in fact making contact with the board better now that I've scraped away. And as soon as I move it away, of course, the uh, the display stops showing. And so, yeah, scraping away this part, the bottom of the connector. When it rips off, when you remove it, um, if if you can, just heat it up and try the other repair method first. Um, but this method is is another way of uh, doing this repair and making sure it connects properly. Ideally, the manufacturer would have actually had a connector for this ribbon connector, just like a like a laptop motherboard has for uh, the ribbon connector off the keyboard. But this company kind of went for a cheaper method, unfortunately to save space or money or who knows what and uh, the result is these failing LCD displays okay so this is the end of my CC radio repair here uh, I've gone back and actually hacked I finished the LCD repair and now I've hacked the LED backlight for it to better suit my needs I was never a fan of the backlight being on all the time when it's plugged in um, especially because I'm going to use this mostly plugged in and just wanted to have the option of turning it off and on at night. So what I've done is I've joined the two LEDs and isolated them from the rest of the circuit with these red and black wires. Uh, I've joined them. And 
The ground goes to this button here, which is the display button, which I've also isolated from the circuit right here. And the positive goes to your 13 volt input, which is the very large capacitor over here. And then there's a diode just to make sure the current's always flowing in the right direction. And of course, a current limiting resistor for the LED. And the other ground wire goes towards the hold switch, which I have no use for. You know, it's cool they added it and all, but I much rather use this as an LED on and off switch. And then that goes to ground. So by flipping the switch on, uh, oops, this fell down. You, uh, your circuit goes to ground, or by pressing that button, the LED circuit goes to ground, which is not really a circuit, it's just two LEDs. So, uh, pretty simple, but it works well. And uh, I got this the LCD repair all done, which was very tricky, but um, using hot glue to hold stuff down really helped once I got the ribbon in place, and then um, cutting off the extra rubber that was unused. So, um, yeah, I wish I had a better video of that to show, but uh, I'll try to describe it better in the description. So, uh, yeah, let's see how it looks. Move my light here. Put the phone down for a second. Plug it in. You'll see now the LED LCD is uh, fully working. Turn it on here, and uh, now I'm going to kind of take the light down here so I can show how this light works. It's very dim. You can see it turning on. The camera doesn't quite show how it looks, but the idea is I do want it dim because um, I'm only going to be using. Here is the radio, all repaired now. Uh, this is the LCD, obviously working great. And, uh... <coughs> excuse me. Um, so far, it's been a few days, actually. It's been working quite well. The LED backlight is a little hard to show because I'm having to use a, uh, a light source on my phone. But it works with the uh, lock switch here. I don't think there's any way I can show that effectively. But it works quite well. And I used a 7805 uh, voltage regulator, actually, coming from the 13 volt power supply, the mains, to uh, drop it to a better voltage for the LED backlight, or it's actually a front light. And then I used a 330 ohm resistor and a diode, a shot key diode, to make sure the voltage was traveling in the proper direction and to give it an, a little 0.7 volt voltage drop. So uh, the backlight I also wired up to the, the button here. If I really wanted to get fancy with it, I could wire this button to a 7474, I believe it is, a counter chip, logic chip, that I could actually make it stay on with just the press and, and be off with the press, but that's a little more work than I'm willing to do. Uh, for right now, it stays on when I hold it, which is good enough for me. And uh, a lovely radio. I really am enjoying this. It's got this great signal bar right here. And as you can hear from the music, it sounds wonderful. The timer is a super useful feature. You can fall asleep to your favorite radio station. And then this will automatically turn off to conserve battery. And the uh, bass and treble controls are very nice to have, as is the, the lovely jog dial there. works quite well. And uh, I'm super happy with it. My next step is going to be to uh, paint this cover here because it's definitely uh, a little rusted here. Found this thing uh, in the trash. So uh, it lives. It lives though. Continues to be a useful piece of electronics and not something in the landfill. Hopefully yours can uh, be revived as well. Give a little TLC. It's a wonderful radio with great reception and great sound. This is Sega Sonic fan signing out.